Hello, this is Hands-On Infrastructure Automation with Ansible. This is Section 2, Exploring Inventory and Playbook Usage. In this section, we will look at configuring inventory and playbooks. Those will be files we create. And we will talk about using tasks and handlers. Tasks and handlers are the two lowest, smallest units of automation to tell Ansible something that it should do. We'll look at exactly how those work. Ansible inventory file. In this video, we will look at running the Ansible playbook command. We will look at creating a file for Ansible inventory. And we will look at how to configure our local system so that it can reach out over SSH and connect to remote systems that Ansible will control. So in our Ansible demo, we ran the Ansible playbook command. But otherwise, when we installed Ansible and showed running one-off or ad hoc commands, we ran just the Ansible command. Those two commands do two different things. The Ansible playbook command is the one that takes a playbook file and applies it to a list of systems in the inventory. That's the one that is most useful for cases where we want to store Ansible configuration in files, check it into version control, run the same commands over and over again. So that's the command that we'll be using for the remainder of the course. Now that inventory, as we saw, could be passed as a comma-separated list to the Ansible command. But, of course, it's more convenient to put that inventory into a file and just reference it so we can use the same set of systems over and over again. So in order to do that, we create a plain text file. You can see in the top how we just have a list of systems, web 01 through web 05, and that certainly works. That's one way we can do it. Because this is in INI file format, you can see on the left side that we can also do groupings or categories, or we can assign a system to a group, and we'll talk about all of the nice things we can do with that in the near future. On the right-hand side, you can see we don't just have to give lists of host names. We can use something like a wildcard, the example on the right there that shows web 01 through 20 would actually be like listing 20 different systems, web 01, web 02, web 03, and so on, all the way up to web 20. And then at the bottom, you can see we can actually just supply IP addresses, and Ansible will work with that as well. Now, the default location for this inventory file, if we just run Ansible playbook and we don't pass it a parameter, it will look in Etsy Ansible hosts. But in most of the examples I'll be giving you, we'll be checking this source code into version control. And from my perspective, I think it's convenient to be able to just clone that anywhere in our file system and then just pass Ansible Playbook the path to the inventory file wherever it happens to be located. So that's how you'll see me do it. But that certainly is an option to put it in that default location. Now, in order for this to work, Ansible is going to look at each of these files, that, each of these systems that we identify in this inventory file, and it's going to connect to them via SSH. For it to know how to do that, it has to be able to turn these host names into an IP address, it has to know what user to use, and it has to know how to authenticate with key-based authentication. We can configure that in the Ansible inventory file, and in an upcoming video, I'll show you exactly how to do that. But for right now, let's talk about how to do that at the layer of the SSH software itself. So the SSH software that Ansible uses is just the underlying open SSH library that comes with most systems that are out there. And the way that it works is it looks in the home directory, in .ssh subdirectory, it looks for a file called config. That config file, if we put the appropriate permissions on it to protect it so that it's safe and it's willing to use it, the SSH software will use that in order to determine exactly what to do when asked to SSH to something. So you can see an example on the right-hand side. You notice that it does allow us to use some wildcards, and it gives us a number of options that we can configure in that configuration file. So you see, as an example, if we take Web01, if Ansible is about to connect to Web01 in order to control it, it'll ask SSH for a connection to Web01. SSH will then open SSH, will then look in this file, and it will notice that there are three parameters that have been set. First of all, 
there is an IP address, uh, so it doesn't need to go and try to find Web01 in a domain name server in DNS. It can just get the IP address directly from this config file. So it knows the IP address to connect to. But you notice the one at the top also includes a web star as a wildcard. That tells it that those parameters apply to anything that starts with web. So it will also say, okay, I'm going to use the Ubuntu user, and I'm going to connect and offer this key-based authentication using this particular ID RSA AWS key that exists in a file in this directory. So by doing this, what we can do is we can keep our Ansible inventory file very simple. It just needs to be a list of Web01, Web02, Web03. Um, and we can put things that might be different for different users. For example, I might keep my SSH keys in a different file. Or we can keep things that might change over time. Since these are virtual machines in AWS, and I'm doing this simply without an elastic IP, every time the system starts, it has a new IP address. It would be very inconvenient for me to try to keep that IP address in the Ansible inventory file because it would be continually changing and I would be continually trying to check things into version control that were just temporary. So by creating this .ssh slash config file, I can keep it in a place that's not version controlled, but that's very easy to update on my system. Let's jump over and we'll take a quick look at exactly how that looks on our system. So you can see here, if I look at this directory of Ansible configuration, there are a number of different paths in here, and we'll go through each one of these in turn exactly how they work. You notice that one of these files is an inventory file. If I look at the contents of that inventory file, you can see it contains two systems, and they each have some group that's associated, and again, we'll, we'll be talking about that very soon. But, you know, for now, let's just focus on what happens if I run Ansible Playbook. So if I run Ansible Playbook, it's going to attempt to connect to that database 01 server first. In order to figure out how to do that, the OpenSSH software is going to look in my home directory at the SSH config file that I have available. And you can see similar to the example in the slides, it's going to look at the top line with its wildcard. It's gonna pick up the user and the identity file. It's also going to look at the next line that's specific to database 01. It's going to pick up that IP address. So if I run the Ansible playbook command, and we'll pass it a playbook file, and we'll pass it a vault password like we did last time, Ansible is going to immediately reach out and connect to that database 01 server, and it's going to be able to do it because it has the configuration in that home.ssh slash config. So with that, you can see how .ssh config works. You can see exactly how Ansible can be used to reach out to different files and different systems and how it uses that inventory file in order to determine what systems to connect to.